Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Sangeeta Ghatge Goyal. I'm working as a principal scientist in the Environmental Audit and Policy Implementation Division of CSIR Miri Nagpur. Since last four or five years, we are all uh, working on emission inventory, action plan, implementation, micro action plan. We uh, are bombarding with all these uh, terms, which were earlier not been uh, discussed with the urban local bodies or uh, the state pollution control boards. And uh, while uh, uh, doing all these things, many a times we face many challenges that how uh, we should go for, uh, uh, further, how we should process our data, from where we can get the data. Uh, since 2016, we were involved in uh, the emission inventory uh, preparation and action plan preparation of 10 cities of Maharashtra. Uh, we have faced many challenges in uh, doing all these activities. Hence, I thought that I should uh, highlight some of uh, the challenges which we faced during all these uh, uh, activities. So the title of my topic is Challenges in Emission Inventory Preparation and Action Plan Implementation. The contents of my presentation are, first is emission inventory. We would like to know how, uh, which approach we should uh, employ for uh, preparing a good and reliable emission inventory. Then secondly, the source specific activity data requirement, which we need for the preparation of emission inventory. Then after that, what are the challenges in this data or getting the data or processing the data? Then uh, third is the emission factors, which emission factors we should use for the calculation of emissions. Then action plan, after the preparation of emission inventory, the uh, action plan preparation comes. And after action plan preparation, we need to implement it. What are the challenges in implementation of that action plan? And lastly, uh, since I was involved in the preparation of emission inventory action plan, as well as uh, uh, giving technical assistance for uh, to Nagpur Municipal Corporation for the implementation of this action plan, I would uh, give a few uh, case study examples of Nagpur City. Now, emission inventory. What is exactly this emission inventory? So emission inventory is the systematic compilation of all the air polluting sources which comes in your study area along with the quantification of the pollutant specific emission load from those sources. And the basic requirements for this emission inventory are data collection about the sources or the activities which are taking place in your study area. Uh, it could be a primary data which you are uh, collecting by yourself, or it could be a secondary data. For example, you need to uh, take some data regarding industries from uh, pollution control boards, or you need some data regarding uh, other area sources from municipal corporations or other uh, offices, government recognized offices, and that data is called as secondary data. Then you need to decide the base year of your emission inventory, that which base year uh, you will uh, consider that these emissions are allocated to this year. Then after that, the main step of emission inventory is emission estimation. That is the detailed estimate of all the air em uh, emissions of criteria pollutants, hazardous air pollutants, or other specific pollutants. Uh, in few uh, studies, uh, specific pollutants are need to be inventorized. So uh, accordingly, you need to change the pollutants. Then after preparation of this base year emission inventory, there is a need for development of the future scenario of these emissions. How the activities will grow in future, how uh, the emissions will grow in future, that you must know for the future planning of all the activities related to all the sources. Hence, whenever emission inventory is prepared, the future scenario of that emission inventory is also prepared. Then one more scenario need to be prepared, that is future control scenario. Now, what is future control scenario? For example, in the present state, uh, some industries are there, some vehicles are there, some area sources are there. If in the future, if we uh, do some interventions for controlling the pollutions, then how that future uh, emissions uh, will be there that we uh, come to know based on this control scenario. We uh, apply various control factors to the existing emissions 
and then that scenario is debit. Now, uh, <clears throat> before moving forward towards emission inventory, I would like to uh, tell the in brief about the air pollution sources. Now, in any emission inventory, generally we target for controlling or inventorizing anthropogenic emission sources. There could be other natural sources also, like volcanoes, forest fires, and all that. But we uh, need to uh, inventorize the pollutants from the anthropogenic sources so that they are under our control. So these anthropogenic air pollution sources are divided into three categories. That is point, area, and line. Point sources are industrial sources, which are emitted from any particular point, like stack, into the atmosphere. Area sources are generally the urban uh, area sources, <coughs> which comprise of hotels, restaurants, crematoria. Open waste burning also contribute to these sources, construction and demolition works, paved, unpaved roads, and many other small, small uh, sources, which we cannot take under point sources because they are not being emitted to a single point. They are various uh, sources emitted from various number of points and relatively in a smaller quantity as compared to the industry sources. Then third category is the line sources. Line is the moving sources of air pollution and uh, uh, traffic is the main uh, source of uh, air pollution in all the urban cities. Whatever these uh, <coughs> non-attainment cities are identified in India, majority have their major uh, share of traffic emissions <clears throat> in their total emissions. Now, whenever we see all these emissions, all uh, these sources, whatever being emitted from whichever uh, source, receptor will always be at risk. There is no escape for us. Anyone who is exposed to these pollutants, he will be always at risk. <clears throat> now, in emission inventory, we will categorize the sources. Just uh, now I told you that area sources, point sources, line sources. In any city, these area sources will be categorized into further uh, categories like domestic cooking. For example, many uh, households use LPG, few households use wood, coal, or some of them use briquettes also, agriculture briquettes for cooking. So this is one of the major source of uh, emissions from area sources. Then construction and demolition activities for buildings, roads, metro, etc. Crematoria, we burn uh, in according to Hindu ritual. We need to cremate the bodies after the death. So a huge number of emissions take place through that uh, activity. So we need to uh, account those emissions also. Then there are hotels, restaurants, bakeries, open eat outs, dhabas. All these also burn some quantity of fuel for their uh, activities. So they are also one of the area sources. Then solid waste burning. In many cities, especially in winter season, we find that people will sweep their uh, courtyards and they will just burn the waste as it is, which will lead to the emissions of various pollutants into the atmosphere. So that is also one of the source. Then paved and unpaved roads, that is a source. And apart from all these, if some small scale industries are there within or just near to the city limits, then they also contribute to the area sources. In point sources, we account for large scale industries, medium scale industries, as well as, as, well as few small scale industries which have some stacks. So they, uh, those we consider in point sources. Then in line sources, we consider all the vehicle categories. Now, now we know the, what are the sources of these uh, emissions. Accordingly, we'll have to plan for our uh, collection of the data. So how we will collect the data for preparing this emission inventory? So there will be primary survey. We'll, you, you will have to uh, do a primary survey. You will have to plan for it. So uh, various sectors for this could be, first is the registered restaurants. What data you will ask for these uh, restaurants? So you need to know type of fuel they are using, whether they use LPG, 
or they use uh, coal because some uh, hotels or restaurants use uh, coal for their tandoors and uh, some use wood also so you need to know which type of fuel they are using you need to know which type of fuel they are using per day quantity of fuel per day and it could be a questionnaire type of survey that you can prepare a questionnaire you can distribute them in the certain areas of the cities where these hotels and restaurants are located and then you can get feedback from them similarly similar surveys could be done from roadside eateries bakeries and dgs which all are unregistered because these roadside eateries open eat outs they are unregistered so you need to do primary survey for these sources similar uh, type of uh, whatever type of fuel they are using how much quantity they are using per day this you need to collect from the questionnaire then for vehicles you need to do vehicle count whatever uh, registered vehicle data if you are going to the rto office that is regional transport office that data will give you only the number of registered vehicles in that particular urban area but when you will uh, find uh, whenever you will try to find out the emissions coming from vehicles you must know what are the on road vehicles in that particular area from that only you can get the realistic estimate of the vehicular emissions so for vehicular uh, sources first of all you will have to identify various locations in the city for the traffic count then uh, you will have to do the traffic counting it could be uh, divided into holidays and working days like this one day working one holiday then you will have to do some surveys for uh, at petrol pumps parking lots etc from these surveys you will know the vehicular fleet age then what are the miles traveled per day from each category of vehicles and all that which will be helpful to you in calculating the emissions in terms of domestic sector you again need to uh, uh, do the questionnaire survey uh, from the sample population it is especially very important in terms of uh, in case of slums because in slums you will find varying fuels are used for cooking they use kerosene they use wood they use coal and they use many other things apart from lpg so you must know what are the type and quantity of fuel they are using similar survey you need to do uh, about crematoria also the same type of uh, fuel quantity of fuel then further you will know uh, need to know the number of bodies burned per day at that crematorium and uh, what are the fuels they are using in case of small scale industries also similar type of data should be sought for then apart from this primary data you will need a secondary data which is the published government data so <clears throat> the first sector is population in any emission inventory the first data you will know a need is the population of that particular city that is urban uh, residential population which you can get from the municipal corporation then you need to know the registered hotels and restaurants that uh, the uh, large scale uh, some hotels fall under large scale industry category so that data is available with state pollution control boards and the other hotels data will be available with the food safety and standards authority of india fssi some data will also be available from the food and drug administration office and you will get the list of hotels and their address in your study area from these offices then regarding construction activities <clears throat> in any city roads bridges and other construction activities go uh, goes on so you you need data on these activities what much uh, what is the area is being constructed where it is located and all that so you need to uh, um, get this data from municipal corporations public works department national highway authority of india and all that and uh, you need uh, to know uh, various data like type of fuel per day what they are using then what is the base area of construction how much they are uh, digging per day then number and uh, operating hours of their non road vehicles for example their jcbs cranes and all that <clears throat> so that you need to find out 
then next sector is industries small foundries distilleries sugar units and all that this data will be available with the state pollution control board you will need to know how much number of these uh, industries are there what are their operating hours what is the type of fuel they are using how much fuel they are using per day etc and also what is the uh, air pollution control systems if it is deployed in that particular industry then that also will will be required <clears throat> in case of vehicular sectors the number of registered vehicles in city and their type this data you may get from rto office this data will be useful uh, for you to know the percentage increase of every year in the vehicular population now after getting this data you know the sources you know uh, the related data now how you will calculate the emissions so uh, the amount of pollutants discharged from any particular pollution source are called as emissions and they are commonly calculated like what are the mass of pollutants emitted over a certain time for example it could be kg per hour or tons per day then mass of pollutants emitted per unit mass of material processed or burned this could be related to the industrial activity finally the emission will be the process or activity or fuel burned multiplied by the emission factor then only you will know what is the amount of emission emitted per day or per year from that particular activity or process now what is this emission factor so emission factors are uh, whenever we are doing some source wise emission estimation so they are always based on activity data and source wise emission factors for various pollutants are used for calculation of these emissions these emission factors can be obtained from the published documents of central pollution control board uh, automotive research association of india and there is one document called as ap42 it is united states environmental protection agency's document which is the compilation of em various emission factors i have uh, for your convenience i have uh, given these uh, some of the links where you can get the emission factors uh, with respect to various sectors for example you can see here uh, in uh, uh, www.epa.gov air emission factors you can see on paved road section is there paved roads section is there so those uh, sections will give you the guidance about the calculation of emissions from uh, paved unpaved roads and all that cpcb there is one report of cpcb which is on air quality monitoring emission inventory and source apportionment study for indian cities national summary report 2011 this report comprises majority of the indian sources emission factors is it is a very good report and it has all the references also that from where these emission factors were taken for example you can see the first source that is fuel combustion fuel oil combustion which is generally used in industries so you can see the common emission factor is given tsp what is tsp is tsp is total suspended particulates so emission factor is given as 9.19 into s plus 3.22 into 0.12 so what is this s so s is the sulfur content of your fuel whatever sulfur content value is there you will have to input as it is there and then you will know the tsp emissions similarly you will find the emission factors for so2 sulfur dioxide nox nitrogen oxides co carbon monoxide methane total organic carbon and all that this uh, 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 report contains majority uh, sources with respect to the emission inventory preparation uh, the first slide uh, it has non vehicular emission factors similarly in the same report you will find residential wood stoves or restaurants burning uh, emissions then you will find domestic kerosene uh, combustion on emissions also and they have given the references also that from where uh, it is taken now coming to vehicles whenever you are doing emission inventory for vehicles you need their emission factors also so uh, the automotive uh, research association of india that is arai and cpcb has uh, done this project that is emission factor development for uh, indian vehicles and uh, uh, this uh, report 
has total 62 categories of vehicles along with their uh, subcategories, their vintage, their fuel type, and they have given the emission factors for five, uh, for various air pollutants like CO, hydrocarbons, NOx, CO2, PN, and others also like benzene, mercury, butyrate, and all that. In this first table, you can see there are emission factors for two-stroke mopeds, uh, less than 80 cc, but vintage is 91 to 96. Then second is two-stroke moped, less than 80 cc, but vintage is 1996 to 2000. And uh, uh, likewise, you can find 62 categories of vehicles emission factors. In the same uh, report, there are emission factors for buses also all CNG and diesel buses also. Now, uh, whenever we are preparing this emission inventory, we know the sources, we have uh, got the primary and secondary data, but while processing that data, we face many challenges. So the challenges in point sources data processing are, whenever consents are granted to the industries, the type and quantity of fuel used for its operation Sometimes at some uh, pollution control board, you can get that, but uh, in the concerns of some pollution control boards, there is no information provided on the type of fuel. Then you must know the ash content and sulfur content of fuels. So you will have to do again uh, some uh, literature survey for this, that for that particular type of industry or for that particular area, what could be the ash content or, or sulfur content of the fuels. Then, you need to ask for the efficiency of APC systems and uh, deployed at these industries because whenever you will calculate the emissions, you will have to know that if some APC system is deployed in that industry, then you will have to reduce the total emissions by the efficiency of that APC systems because whatever emissions you will be calculated activity-wise or process-wise, will not be directly emitted as it is. They will pass through the control system. So there will be certain reduction in the emissions. Then uh, many a times you will not get information about the exact location, that is latitude, longitude of some industries. So this data, again, you will have to take from the pollution control board critically because some, sometimes consent is granted at a different address and industries located uh, uh, far away from it. Then if these industries are using any clean source of energy, solar, wind, or if they are recycling uh, or treating uh, some of their uh, processes and some waste, then uh, that should be maintain, uh, mentioned in the consent so that we can account for it. Then secondly, whenever you are calcula doing calculations for large scale industries, medium scale industries or small scale industries, you must know the working hours of the industries because whenever you will calculate the emissions, uh, you will uh, calculate uh, them accordingly if they are work working uh, for 14 hours a day or 20 hours a day. So you need to account those working hours also. For large scale industries, there will be higher working hours. For medium scale, there will be less than that. And it should be um, based on the questionnaire. Then operation hours of DG sets in industries, must be specified. For example, in consent, you will find that this industry is uh, use, is having stacks for these many number of DG, state, DG sets, but uh, the operation hours or exact operation hours for the DG set data is very much required so that your DG set emission cannot be overestimated. Then there are some auto renewal uh, consents are there. So it is uh, th that consent will never have any fuel data or any detailed data of the industry. So you should always refer, refer the original consent of that industry so that you get all the information related to the fuel used processes and the emissions. Then whenever you will uh, do the future scenario prediction, so you need to inquire for the sector specific growth rates of various industries. For example, uh, steel sector, power sector, each sector will have some different growth rates. So you need to inquire about those growth rates and then you should employ those growth rates to your emission inventory for generation of the future scenario. Then uh, while doing emission inventory for vehicular uh, sources, there are challenges like on-road vehicles. If you will go for vehicle counting, 
this is the most dynamic activity and you will find a very uh, di uh, huge difference between the uh, uh, daily hours of uh, the traffic so uh, you should uh, critically check for that variation then um, whenever you are doing vehicle counting it is very difficult to know that if that car or jeep or uh, goods vehicle is petrol driven or diesel driven so you need to do some uh, primary survey and you need to apportion some proportion for the petrol and diesel vehicles then uh, secondly it is um, very much required that how much kilometer that vehicle is traveling per day that is pkt so you need to uh, know this data very clearly so that your estimation could be near to the uh, existing scenario then uh, you will have to know the age of vehicles as i have uh, shown you the emission factors are based on the age of vehicles fleet of vehicles that is for bs2 you will find different emission factors for bs3 you will find different and like that so it is always uh, better that you must know uh, the age of the vehicles then coming to the area sources there are various challenges you will face in area sources first of first challenge is data unavailability for example whenever you will go for hotels and restaurants data you will go to fssi office you will find that there is no data of fuels uh, uh, present in the licenses so uh, what you will have to do in your primary survey you will have to uh, take uh, this data because you will not get it anywhere and then you need to apportion those uh, fuel uh, type and quantity to other hotels or restaurants in the study area then majority of open eat outs use polluting fuels like coal kerosene food etc in fact uh, at one of the open eat out i have seen that that person uh, was using plastic also when he was roasting the corns he used plastic also for burning so you need to know this data critically because highly polluting fuels are used by these open eat outs and no published data is available for them then uh, in various urban centers we find that open waste burning is very common so you, you must know the number of cases uh, been burned in any particular day then how much is the quantity of waste burned and then you can find out the emissions from these then uh, the next source is crematoria whenever you are uh, calculating the crematoria emissions data on number of body bodies cremated per day and what was the fuel used for their cremation is must so you need to uh, know this data this data could be uh, taken from the municipal corporations then uh, next is domestic fuel generally what we do is that census data on polluting fuels like coal kerosene wood and along with lpg uh, per household is uh, used uh, for the calculations of emissions but uh, the uh, thing is that this data is available ev uh, for every 10 years gap then uh, what you will do that you will have to project this for the, your study base year and uh, there may be some uncertainties during uh, this projections now coming to my next section that is action plan case study of nagpur so nagpur is a centrally located city in india and we have done emission inventory for this city then we have done action plan preparation also but action plan is now under implementation so this action plan has major areas which are shown here that is first is capacity building capacity building of the urban local bodies state pollution control boards and other related departments departments which are involved in this action plan implementation activities then there is air quality monitoring network then uh, second uh, major area is public outreach first of all you need to create create sufficient awareness among public that they need to contribute in all these activities they need to play their role to get the clean air then third uh, major area is road dust construction and demolition activities green cover then vehicles then industrial pollution biomass burning domestic fuel combustion and crematoria when uh, we did emission inventory of nagpur city we have uh, done the uh, the 
category wise emission estimation and this pie chart is showing that among all the emissions vehicular sources is the biggest polluter in nagpur city in terms of uh, this uh, this pie chart is for pm emissions followed by area sources which are contributing to 33% and uh, after that large scale industries small scale industries and medium scale industries now since vehicular sources is the biggest polluter when we have tried to find out the details of these vehicular source, sources so this first pie chart shows us the uh, con uh, 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 percentage uh, share of various vehicles in on road vehicles we have done vehicle counting in the nagpur city at various locations and found that appro uh, approximately 66% on road vehicles are two wheelers followed by cars jeeps vans which are 20% and then we have auto rickshaws or six seaters bus trucks and lcv that is light commercial vehicles and all that and this right uh, side pie chart tells us about the pm 2.5 emissions from all these categories you can see the vast difference between the number of two wheelers and their emissions even though 66% of vehicles are two wheelers the pm 2.5 emissions from these two wheelers account for only 12% among the total vehicles and you will see that light commercial vehicles and light goods vehicle is the ma major polluter of pm 2.5 in nagpur accounting for almost 32% of pm 2.5 emissions followed by buses trucks then cars jeeps vans etc now based on that analysis uh, action plan was prepared this was the structure of that action plan you can see the uh, source group vehicle emissions control option given as launch extensive drive against polluting vehicles for ensuring strict compliance so uh, expected reduction is mentioned that whenever uh, uh, you use existing polluting uh, old and under maintained vehicles and they will approximately uh, which are approximately 10 to 15% of the total vehicles uh, so if these uh, vehicles are uh, modified or they are properly maintained then the emission uh, will be reduced by 20% just by bs4 technologies and uh, this activity um, responsible agencies are, are rto smart city nmc and transport commission and uh, then uh, in case of nagpur all they have launched extensive extensive drive against polluting vehicles then uh, there is uh, necessary steps taken for pucs also that i'll tell you now uh, when we talk about puc so there is a history of vehicular emission standards implementation in india bs1 was started in the year 2000 it was implemented nationwide and bs4 was introduced in 2017 in uh, whole nation bs5 was skipped and then bs4 was uh, implemented since april 10, 2020 and it is implemented nationwide now what are the challenges when you see these visiting uh, polluting vehicles you know that they are polluting and the pollution is very much so what are the challenges the thing is that all the pollution under control is the mandatory uh, uh, certificate which we need to drive any vehicle the parameters which are mandatory in this uh, certificate are carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons so uh, there is a suggestion that uh, ratio of uh, we can see the ratio of co to pm emissions so that uh, we can say that the vehicle is polluting because whenever we see the that rto office is reluctant that that they say that under uh, this uh, provision we can only uh, catch the vehicle uh, for co or hc and all these emissions there is no provision for pm now whenever diesel buses are running on any uh, city there will be huge emissions bs2 and bs3 category diesel buses are already completed 15 years on road and uh just for example just uh, to know uh, that uh, what are the emissions from these uh, diesel bs3 buses are there so i have done some emission estimation for city buses 
So 100 uh, BS3 diesel buses will uh, lead to 62 kg per day emissions of CO, 104 kg per day emissions of NOx, and 2.2 kg per day emissions of PM. Excuse me, madam. Ah, uh, yes. Madam, uh, can you please uh, show your presentation slide in full mode? Yes, madam. Okay, okay. Ha, ha. Thank you so much. Now, uh, uh, there are uh, recently very uh, good strategies uh, asked by government of India and under NCAP, it is uh, under implementation, that is e-vehicles. So in, uh, in case of Nagpur, six numbers of e-buses have been already procured and they are on the road. And when I have done emission estimation for this, means how much they are uh, capable of reducing uh, the emission uh, load in the air. So uh, we found that in terms of PM, 2 point PM, they are capable of reducing 0.38 kg per day of PM emissions into the Nagpur air. And uh, similarly, various charging stations and everything are proposed in Nagpur. Uh, and the challenges, challenges with these electric vehicles are there are O&M costs for e-buses is 43 to 66 rupees per kilometer. Then you need to uh, create uh, infrastructure, charging stations and all that. Then uh, we should uh, try to find out uh, the feasibility of solar powered charging stations for these vehicles. And there should be provision for a subsidy to be given for the E3 and 4 wheelers. So this is the public transport system in Nagpur. In terms of uh, public transport, the challenges which we are facing, uh, for example, this is Nagpur Metro, 38.2 30, kilometer corridor is there. But the average ridership, when we uh, see that from January 20 to March 20, 5,434 persons have uh, uh, was the average ridership, which increased to 7,100 in October to December 2020. So with respect to the population of around 27 to 28 lakhs of Nagpur, this number is very less. Then in case of city buses, uh, we, uh, we observed that what are the challenges there is more preference to use personal vehicles than the public transport. The pre-COVID riders of city buses per day were 1.5 lakhs, whereas post-COVID only one lakh uh, persons are traveling using these buses. Uh, in, uh, for some duration in 2018 and 19, ethanol AC buses were introduced in Nagpur. However, because of a slightly higher fare, people preferred uh, to uh, use only non-AC diesel buses. Then safety and bus frequency is also a factor. Then uh, when you will find the action point that is traffic synchronization, the challenges faced are CCTV footage is used for the traffic rule bre um, breakers. RTO is sending challenge to the uh, vehicle owner, but what is happening is that if those challenges are sent on their addresses, people are not, are not responding. They are not paying the dues. They are not paying their challenge. So now the RTO, when, 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 uh, whenever during implementation meetings, we uh, discussed with RTO staff, then uh, at that time they said that this, is, this has become a big headache for us that how to collect the fine from people. And one more point is there, there are frequent transfers of the RTO staff. Then it becomes very difficult every time to uh, start from the new for the new uh, coming RTO person. Then uh, in terms of crematoria, there are 16 number of crematoria in Nagpur. Wood and briquettes are the major fuels. Then LPG, kerosene, and diesel are also used at some of the crematoria. And in 2017, there were 13,600 bodies burned by wood. 48 bodies were burned by agriculture briquettes. And uh, uh, the 13,000 um, bodies used 4103 tons of wood. Emissions were 48 tons per year. So uh, in our uh, in CSR Niri Nagpur, uh, Padma Madam, uh, Padma Rao Madam is doing uh, 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 the fabrication and installation of emission control system for various crematoria. She has already done for Delhi Nigam Bodhgarh. Recently, she has done similar uh, fabrication and installation at Pune Municipal Corporation. And this system is also proposed for Nagpur Municipal Corporation which is very effective in controlling the crematoria emissions. And in her lecture of crematoria, she will tell you the details of this. Now, what are the action completed with respect to Nagpur city? So uh, the e-vehicles, e which were already introduced since 2016, so already 95 were there. 
They have now reached to 1883 number. Total e vehicles are this. Then 84 CT buses were converted to CNG, which were earlier running on diesel. Then uh, there is green buffer that is um, plantation is done along traffic corridors for approximately seven kilometer length completed and proposed is 21.5 kilometer. Two number of mechanical sweepers procured. Then there is also horticulture waste converter. Concretization of roads is ongoing and MPCB has developed and uh, started three camp station within Nagpur. Then uh, this is one documentary which is prepared by Nagpur Municipal Corporation for creating awareness among the general public of, uh, about the air pollution. And then infrastructure uh, improvement uh, for the air quality management. These are some of the pictures. That is the wall-to-wall -wall paving. Uh, these are the uh, flyovers or underpaths which are created for reducing the traffic congestion. And uh, lastly, let us all work together to make the air clean in our polluted cities. Thank you.